Hey gardeners, you got critters chewing on your plants? Well stick with me and I'll show you how to keep them away. <laughs> what? Hey gardeners, do you have problems with gophers or other burrowing critters getting into your garden? Well I do and it really pisses me off. I've tried a lot of things to eliminate the problem. I don't like using a lot of poisons in the garden so I won't introduce poisons primarily because we have a cat that does fair share of bringing in the gophers. But there's so many of them in this part that we can't uh, seem to kill all of them just with one cat alone. I tried trapping them. Every year I trap the dumbest of the lot, but the rest of them keep coming back and eating my produce. So I've developed a technique where I can peacefully coexist with the gophers, and I'd like to share it with you. So stick around and I'll show you how I make this work. First of all, let me show you the materials you're going to need for this project. First of all, like most gardeners, you're going to need some what's known as root guards. I refer to them as root baskets or gopher baskets. This is a standard one gallon basket readily available from your nursery or local hardware store. I like to be able to take these out at the end of the year and reuse them. So what I do is I don't form it any more than you see right here. I just kind of expand it out to a circle or almost a diamond shape works better for me. And then I put it in the ground in the process that I will demonstrate here in just a moment. At the end of the season, I carefully dig them up, invert them, shake out all the soil, and then to store the little buggers, I can just push the bottom out and press them flat like that, and I can get a whole bunch of them in a plastic milk crater. So any of uh, you gardeners have probably used a root guard or a root basket like that and that's just the start of the process. I take it a few steps further and that's what the secret is to my success. You're also going to need some landscape cloth. This is standard landscape cloth or landscape fabric and this too can be purchased at your local nursery. I could cut this into three foot by three foot squares and then I cut a hole in the middle that's just about the right shape to accommodate the top of a root basket once I set this root basket or root guard in the ground. And then you're going to need some hardware cloth. This is half inch hardware cloth again as the name might suggest. You can acquire this at a hardware store and I try to get a three foot wide roll because we're going to cut this into a three foot by three foot square and then we're going to mark an X shape as I will demonstrate in the center and you take these four tabs and bend them back and then you've got hardware cloth that goes in the ground over your root basket and provides a rodent proof barrier between the pesky critters trying to get to your produce and your produce. And then lastly, you're going to need some kind of rod. I use something like this. It's a round form stake. And the purpose of that is going to be, as I demonstrate, to hold these root baskets in place when we're setting them in the garden. All right, so now that we've got all the materials together, let's pack all this stuff up and let's head out in the garden and see if we can install these things. And I'll show you how I do it. Maybe it'll save you some time and effort. See you out in the garden. Out in the garden, we till the area to get rid of any weeds and to create a nice place to work. We fire up the tractor with a 12 inch auger. And we bore a hole about 24 inches deep at every location where we're gonna put a plant. If you don't happen to have a tractor with an auger, a shovel or post hole digger and a wheelbarrow works just as well. Uh -huh. 
after we finish boring the holes, we take a rake and smooth out all of the soil we brought to the surface. Next, we take our rods, skewer the top of our baskets, and we suspend them in the holes we just drilled, ready to fill with nice composted soil. The next step is to fill our holes with compost soil mixture. The holes are a bit bigger than the baskets, and we fill the whole area with this rich soil mixture and that allows the plant to promote healthy root growth. Now that we have our area raked out, it's time to set the landscape fabric and the wire mesh. I'm doing a little final leveling because this will be our final grade for our garden. That vertical stake you see just helps us keep from losing track of that root basket. As we're raking, it can be become covered up and hard to spot. I pull out the rod that was suspending the root basket while we filled it with compost. We won't need that anymore. And the root basket, we really want about an inch of it protruding above the soil level. It's easy enough to lift it up. You just lift it and shake it a little bit and the soil will settle down underneath it. The reason we want this root basket about an inch above the soil is we want a little overlap between the steel mesh of the root basket and the steel mesh of the hardware cloth. This will prevent a gopher from burrowing right up to the edge of the root basket and chewing off a vine that might be holding some ripening fruit. The purpose of the landscape fabric is to keep weeds from going up underneath the wire mesh. It's nigh on to impossible to weed underneath that wire mesh, so the landscape fabric will keep the weeds down. Once I set the wire mesh over the root basket, I can actually bend the lip of the root basket over the hardware cloth a little bit to make a gopher proof seal. The last step is to take some landscape staples. These are some nine gauge galvanized wire U-shaped staples that I get at the landscape supply. And I just uh, use it to fasten down all four corners of the wire mesh to hold it in place. been a couple days since I set these root baskets and ground wires and already you can see gophers starting to dig amongst our future garden. The good news is there's no way the little suckers going to be able to get to our plants. So once you've got your infrastructure all prepared the last and final step is the easy and the fun part. We've got our root basket, we've got our landscape fabric, we've got our screen wire, and we've got our quality amendments, some good soil here in the hole. So let's get this tomato plant planted here. So we're gonna dig out a, the right amount of soil to make room for our new plant. And here I'm planting a San Marzano tomato. It's a variety I had never used before, but my sister recommended it, so we're gonna give that a try. And judging from the hole here, I think we got the, about the right amount. And then I'll take this tag, and rather than try to put it where the plant is and have it covered up with foliage, I can stick it right over here in the corner, underneath the half inch screen wire and I can see it without having to lean down underneath the plant 
mid, mid to late season when I want to take some notes and evaluate how these varieties are doing. And I set that in the hole and I realized that my root ball is just a little too low. No problem there, you need to do it just. I'll just put a little soil around the outside of it. Lift the plant gently, shake it so that that extra compost gravitates to underneath the root ball. Do that again until I get the plant, the top of the plant slightly recessed below the hardware cloth. It gives me a little well to collect water. The drip irrigation system irrigates on a periodic basis. Continue to adjust, tamp the soil a little bit because, of course, you know that once you water it, it's going to subside. The surface is going to lower a little bit, and there you go. One San Marzano tomato plant in place and immune from any meddling by gophers, moles, moles, or any other pest that might try to get at it. Well, that just about wraps up this instructional gardening video. I hope all of you learned something. Even you more experienced gardeners may have learned a trick or two. So I hope this keeps the gophers and other burrowing pests out of your plants and that you have a successful gardening season. I'll leave you with a few more scenes from our garden and thanks for watching.